Okay, so welcome to Crack Week 4. So we're going to look at how we can do some random allocation of groups. So a common problem you might have when you design an experiment is you might have a load of subjects and you want to randomly allocate them to, say, two groups. So there's various ways you can do this in stats packages. I was going to show you how to use it quickly and easily in Excel. So the first one we're going to do is we have an experiment where we have 100 subjects. We want to randomly allocate them into two groups, and we want basically 50 subjects in the first group, which we'll call group A, and 50 in the second group, which we'll call group B. What we're going to do is we're going to use the random number function in Excel. So first of all, to start this off, what we're going to do is you open up Excel. I've opened up Excel here. And just to remind you, in Excel you get these little rectangles, which we call cells, and each one is identified by its column and its row. So this one is called A1, and this is B1, etc. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting in a 1 in um, A1. So all I did is I clicked on that and typed a 1. You can see up in the formula bar it's just got a 1. And then I type a 2 and then a 3. And we are going to do this so we get all the way down to 100. Now, Rather than type it in individually, you can actually cheat. If you just highlight like that, and then you move, so you see I move the cursor so it's a big cross there, and then I move it here so it becomes a black cross, and I click and hold and drag, you can see it's dragging down, and what it's doing is it's seen the pattern I had, which was one, two, three, and you went, oh, I'll guess that. You want to increase by one every time. So if I go all the way down to 100, and now release, it's filled in the numbers for me. Cool. So now we're going to go to this one. And this time we're going to do a formula. What we want is we want the formula RAND. Now there's a couple of ways you can get formulas. One, you can click on the formula thing here. So if you click insert function, you could search what you're looking for. So we're looking for random numbers. If I click OK, it says, oh, there's just one. So I can highlight it and click OK. And it tells you what it does. It's going to return a random number that is going to be between 1 and 0. OK. And it's done that. When I hit finalize, it's done it. The way we could have done it, is if I delete that, is we could have actually just come here and typed equals. So it tells it we want a formula, rand, and then put brackets, hit return, it does the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the corner again. So Go to the corner again, and then go drag it down. And again, there's no sort of pattern here. It's just going to say, okay, you want that same formula again and again and again. So there we are. We've got two columns. We've got this column here, which is numbers 1 to 100, which is going to be the ID number for each of our subjects. And this one, we've got random numbers. Now, your random numbers will look different. It's the idea. They are random. And basically, each time you mess around, it will move these around for you. So you might find these numbers change. So how can we actually now randomly allocate? Well, because these are random, if I sort on this column, it's going to sort them from smallest to largest. But because these are random, the number that's smallest in here will be different for each individual person. So what I can do now is I'm going to go up to Data. I'm going to click on Sort. And I'm going to say, I want to sort on column B, because that's where my random numbers are. I'm going to do smallest to largest and click OK. Now, the strange thing is, it doesn't look like it's worked, because these numbers are not sorted smallest to largest. But what it does is, as soon as you change the Excel spreadsheet, it changes the random numbers. But notice how this order is now changed. This is now a random order. You have randomly move these, what we call a random permutation. That is, every number is still there, it's just in a random order. So now I can say, well, this is going to be group A, this is group A, this is group A. And notice the time, this is how the random numbers change every time. But because I'm not sorting again, these stay the same. And I can take these A's and I can drag that down for the first. fifty. And then this are going to be B, B, and again, these can be the rest.
So there you are. Now we have a group. So if I wanted to know all the subjects who are going to be in group A, it would be all the ones that have an A. So subject 86, 46, 70, 16, 81, etc. all the way down until the last one in group A is this one, which is 44. And then group B is subject 76, etc. And if you checked, every subject is in one and only one group. Obviously, your grouping will be different because we've used this randomization. Okay.